So it shows a continuation from Judah all the way to David without an exodus, without a conquest. So the Bible actually, which is the word of God, is telling us that the exodus didn't happen within the biblical text. Okay. Right, here we are at, uh, at the Open Air Asylum again, because it's Sunday, and we have, uh, yeah, we have a little scheduled, like, combo that we're going to have some informational on uh, the so-called black Hebrew Israelites. Only the black seems to be true in that uh, whole statement, although I have seen very light-skinned people also shouting and spewing nonsense. So, I don't know where to go first. Uh, that way, can you explain uh, the book you have in your hand, and what's your name, and where are you from, and... <laughs> What, what a beautiful no introduction. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, we are at Speaker's Corner. She called it the Open Asylum for good reason, of course. But one of the mad people that's here today is Brother Garfield from New York. <laughs> and I'm from the Conscious Community. And I also have a new book out that's number one on Amazon in the genealogical section because genealogy deals with lineage. So the black Hebrew Israelites claim they have a lineage goes back to the ancient Israelites in the biblical text. So I do have a book out that's called Misconceptions and Misinformation by the Black Hebrew Israelites, and I'm here to spread the word. Give that a minute, let's just, uh, so that's that. Is there any focus going on? Excellent camera work. <laughs> Excellent. Right, now we're all blurry again. <laughs> right, so, um, yeah, how did you get interested in polemicizing so-called Black Hebrew Israelism and uh, do you not want a footstool in heaven? I mean, what, you, you seem to be the right kind of shade for this vibe, so what's going on? You don't say that there's neither Jew nor Gentile in Christ, do you? You're not one of those nutters. No, <laughs> sorry. sorry. I hope not. <laughs> but um, let me say this. Um, I got involved with the Hebrew Israelites through social media over nine years ago. And some of the debates that I had with them, it, it just, I kept feeling like I was debating somebody from like prep school. It was a so... Uh, uh, Juvenile conversations, yeah. right. Juvenile conversations and um, no research. So what I decided to do is take four years to put together the academic work on what's the current consensus on issues as far as the biblical text and regarding archaeology, anthropology, history, um, linguistics and genetics. Excellent, excellent. And do you have any interest in like polemicizing uh, so-called Hebrew Israelism or? The whole thing is, is just with... Just godlessness in general. Admit yeah, it. I think, I think, so the whole thing is uh, for myself as an apologist and as an evangelist is I've come across the Hebrew Israelites and in particular I think they've ratchet they've ratcheted up um, you know the hostility between blacks and whites personally myself they they're making claims that when you check them out biblically uh, are unsound <laughs> and the, the doctrines most of the doctrines don't trace back uh, to further, the, than you know, the further than the 70th <laughs> or 18th century. So things like um, uh, a non-virgin birth, Esau was the white man. Joseph as the father, don't forget That's that That's right, yeah. So so all of these kind That's of things, the spirit. It, it, it's an issue. And we're, we're, we're now a globalised society. If something goes viral, it goes viral over here as well. Hence me watching the conscious community, looking at arguments there and kind of becoming involved and having dialogue with uh, Garfield as well on, on the Bible. Sorry. So yeah, that, yeah, that's what I see. Brilliant. And what I would say is that through, like I came here originally, I guess with Islam in mind, although Hebrew is he, uh, so-called Hebrew Israelism, I can't even say it at the moment, was probably second on my list and then godlessness in general, because they are of course included in that demographic, um, as is Islam. Um, what I would, like what I find interesting is it seems to me, at least, apart from one Western and like those kind of 1960s but it just seems very much like nation of islam without the bow ties and the bible instead like it's very much race based rather than grace based and it's not only that it's it's cherry picking to the point of an olympic sport like it's just they get a welcome pack with copy pasted verses and they mustn't really ever read further through they've got their little dulux color chart um everyone except caucasians is okay and also if you're caucasian but you can dance um, apparently you potentially a Hebrew is like also Bruce Lee because he had the moves if you can beatbox I'm not I'm not joking I've seen them say to Sam Shimon if you can beatbox like David Wood David Wood is probably a Hebrew is like because of um, nonsense as we call it or twaddle in England so yeah oh, that, oh that's craziness but let me let me add on to what uh, my brother just I can't said. beatbox by the way <laughs> so you're definitely not a Hebrew <laughs> um, a I shame. do have a chapter that addresses the whole Edomite claims 
I have a chapter called Is Yahweh an Edomite God? Where I do show the connection within the biblical text in the book of Habakkuk, in the Judges 5, where it talks about Yahweh coming from Teman, which is actually in Edom. But I not only use the biblical text, I use archaeology because they did find the, the, um, the Shasu of Yahweh in um, in, 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 in Egypt, Sudan. in the 1400s and in the, the 1200s, they found evidence of them showing that Yahweh, they're the first people ever in the history that they found who worship Yahweh. And those people actually came from Edom, which agrees actually with what the biblical text says. So where they get this Edom is the white man from, I don't know. <laughs> I'll so tell now, you where. <laughs> so now Edom, if Edom is from the white man, that means they have been literally worshiping the white man God, which actually contradicts what the Bible says and contradicts what they what should Jesus believe Christ in. Said, exactly. Certainly. So at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, this book here is kryptonite for the for the Hebrew Israelite claimants. Not brother it talks kryptonite. About, it talks green, about glowing stuff. Also, the 70 AD and 1 million going into West Africa, I showed how ludicrous that claim is because in history, the Judeans who were crucified during or killed off during the 70 AD war actually moved up further northern Israel to a place called Pella and some of them were killed some of them even buried burned their um, they were wrapped up in Torah Torah um, leaves and they were burned alive I talk about it in the book so we know where they went but listen to the logics though if 1 million Jews fled into West Africa which is pretty much would have been all of them how did 500,000 Jews die in the Barkova revolt and how did over a million Jews fight during the Kittus War, which was 60 years after the, um, I mean, 115 AD, which was like around 45 years, yeah, 45 years after 70 AD. Where did all these Jews come from if they were exiled? We have documentation and proof exactly where they went. They got it from this pseudo scholar called Rudolf Windsor, who mm. talked about Babylon the Timbuktu, and he was the one that said it, and they've been repeating it. Ever well, it since. must be true then. I mean, it just just from one man alone as opposed to Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm not buying it, but I mean, I can see the attraction. And what I would say is when the Bible speaks of, you know, um, Esau have I hated and, uh, you know, that, yeah, that, but that, that's hate is because it's obviously prior to his birth. I believe that the more correct or adequate translation is rejected and accepted because we know that Israel is accepted and chosen and pretty much lifted above other nations. That's not Hebrew Israelites, that's just Israel, Jacob's descendants. Also, hate not your brother the Edomite, like, uh, or hate not the Edomite for he is your brother. That's pretty concrete. Um, I don't know of slave ships in Egypt because I'm not sure of the Nile, how, mu how much they could carry and whether we're gonna say that bondage is now. I think it's mainly based on race baiting, um, this is my, like not my issue, but this is my sympathy, I guess, is that because of um, the transatlantic slave trade, obviously not the barbers and the white uh, like slavery, like well, that pre-existed yeah. that, but I'm talking about in general blacks and Irish people as well, that slave trade, because of the loss of identity, the loss of surnames, the loss of like family heritage, etc., and a national, not national, uh, you know, like a cultural heritage, it's very attractive, I guess, to people who feel aimless and robbed of their history to latch onto a new identity. And rather than the new identity that we have in Christ, they've gone for the the pretty weird, um, like we were sub, um, subjected, so now we want to be the subjectors. We were oppressed, so now we don't just want equality, we want to be the oppressors and have footstools made of human beings. <laughs> and uh, only white ones because we like the colour chart. So I don't get it, but um, Vocab does, and he... He polemicizes them in, in, not in New York, but in America, quite a long way from New York. But G-Man also is in New York and he does yeah, some sterling work. He's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, any other thoughts on this nonsense? Not the um, book, I mean the religion. Well, Cult. I think, I think it's, it's, it's just one thing to understand that in this day and time, when we're sharing peace, love, when we're trying to overcome anything which is just Fleshly. poisonous, yeah. yeah, that people are spreading, um, that gets shared and goes more viral than somebody kind of doing a good act or getting yeah, in course. scholarly, looking at things and trying to resolve issues. Yeah. And it that's the issue. The narrative, that's, that's right. And the fact of the matter is, the, the, everybody is clear about that, the whole history that happened by the slave trade and where people have been left. And this just misconstrues things, it makes things worse, yeah. and it brings out more hate. 
and it makes up yeah. a weird Hebrew language that is not real either. The the, I, I can't yeah. even begin to pronounce like the Yeshua of the y y skiddly, skiddly Widdly was name. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. not for me skiddly because there's only one way. name yeah. under heaven by which man may be saved, and it's not some made up. Uh, like Tourette's claim, it's just yeah, not. Shy and all that Probably, crazy. like how just make it up in the morning, put it on the internet, and by the evening it will be verified historical fact. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, one, yeah, one of the things I want to add though is um, there's a chapter on the lost tribes have been found, and the key to that is the Black Hebrew Israelites actually stole or plagiarized the idea from British Israelism. Yeah, I remember. So when yeah, they started historical. using Herbert Armstrong's work, you know, um, this means the sons of Isaac and. In all this craziness, men of the covenant, British means men of the covenant. And oh, didn't you know that, that the original English people were black according to a Hebrew? Of course, right of, that course, I know. of course. King James King was James. black even while the slave trade was going, going on, on. But he forgot to mention. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't slaves. in that day. And as yeah. a matter of fact, King James, for, for those who don't know, there's an article called King James and his whiteness, where it talks about <laughs> King James felt he was the superior white over all whites in the world. This is where that idea actually permeated I I in the British. So the British felt like they were better than other whites. That's why they would call them dark and swarthy Natives and black. Natives is what we call so them. They would, you see, this is the issue of black Hebrew Israelites. They found a little document that says some people that they called, we assumed were white, which were Southern Europeans. Irish were called, people as right, well were denigrated. Were called yeah. dark, swarthy, swarthy and black. Exactly. So now they call Africans Ethiopian Moors or Negro. They forget that part. So whenever you see a black person in an English picture, they call him a Moor or Ethiopian. So they had a play called um, the Black of Beauty or the Black something with black. With um, with King James' wife had to wear blackface. So if she was black, oh, it's a good job she's not around she, on the internet. Why would she have to wear blackface? And the second thing is don't start using logic now. Yes. That's ridiculous. So now also in that play, they talk about King James. Once they see, once they're blackened. They're from Ethiopia, by the way. Once they see King James, they'll get the light or, and become white. And that will make them saved. Oh, like if you touch the king's thing and your right. leprosy goes or no whatever, way, right. or your dandruff is so, cured So, so or now, if he's black, why is it that you got to be white to be better or fear or thing is, just in the smart. English language, just as an aside, like, obviously it comes biblically as well, like the light and the darkness. But black is usually used for negative connotations in as much as... as as black as night, I suppose, isn't too negative, but a black soul or the black death or the black... It's nothing black to do with brownness. Black. It's to do with, like, darkness as opposed to the light of whatever, Christ, yeah. the morning, um, the, the morning Al stuff. Are you familiar with Al Capone, right? Yeah. Al Capone was described as dark and swarthy. Yeah. And we know he's whiter than the whitest white Because guy. they're differentiating between Caucasian as in ivory or right. porcelain, right. which is a makeup, uh, right. like, brand uh, mm -hmm. name. But yeah, as opposed to Mediterranean or Greek or any sort of um, Hispanic uh, kind of whiteness. And then you go on to Slavic kind of. So that's where the. So, and that's just the root of all of the prejudices are that even if you're white, which is um, like was seen as better because you're part of the col uh, coloni col colonizers rather yeah, than the right. colonials, there are still gradations. And we see it in like even the West Indies today, there are skin creams for ladies they literally bleach, bleach their right, skin right, right, they have right. this chicken feed stuff to make them portly because it's still like a renaissance era ref pre raphael like, like bigger ladies and lighter mm. skin mm. even within these black communities are seen as more attractive so it's not just a uh, a, a, a white and black thing. and mm. asian um like different viewpoint it's within these communities still lighter skin like especially prior to the 60s with the like a black is beautiful movement and so mm -hmm. it's still like there's ingrained prejudice and it can't all come from hollywood even though satan is busy like these people have got their own mainstream networks to yeah it's pretty it's you know what it is i think it's because satan does not want unity in the church one bit obviously and differences of the flesh, which we're told are nothing compared to the inner workings of a man's heart, like those are the things that we can judge other people and the pride. We can live outwardly pious lives, but in our hearts, if we're hating, we're just as condemned as if we're out murdering, like, you know. So it's a tool of Satan to divide the church, I think. Yeah, I think, um, but basically, because of the slave trade, um, it, and, and you are, I look at us as kidnapped victims. We don't know who we are. We were put on slave ships, and we don't we need an identity so it's what we call in the united states an identity crisis yeah we are either a more we want to be a black Hebrew israelite we want to be muslim we want to be Nation arab we want to be every single thing 
because we don't know who we are. So in a sense, I could defend them that way because we're searching for an identity. Yeah, but I would say that your true anybody's true identity, C.S. Lewis speaks about it, we are not truly our our true selves as, as God or Yahweh wanted us to be until we are in Christ, where there's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, like male or female in terms of hierarchy. So you until you die to yourself and die with him, you won't rise with him and you're not your true self. That's what the Bible teaches. So. Right. I'm going to just bring us to another point as well. So Garfield's book... Uh, misconceptions and misinformation by the black Hebrew Israelites. Although it takes on the issue of black Hebrew Israelism, Garfield from certain scol uh, scholars that are in the field via academia is contesting certain biblical accounts. So the account of the Exodus, um, the, the book of Daniel, some things that went in there. He did a, a thing recently with uh, digital Hammurabi and his position now is more of well atheist or ag ag agnosticism so I don't know Garfield if better you like next time <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> well well it's or soon. I, I think I think son I think, of man coming yeah anytime I, I, I mean it's a conversation obviously that is relevant for Garfield and that he's having he's got his own platform he hosts Christians prayers on there. please everyone <laughs> he hosts I'm not joking yeah yeah <laughs> so he hosts Christians on there sometimes as well um, big up to Pastor Bennett and and Cherry Cherry Love who I know personally but just to give you an example, um, the first time I had a conversation with Garfield was about the historicity of the Exodus and one of the claims that we both looked at together that he's got a view on and I've got a view on is, say for example, who the Shasu of Yahweh is. i got a view that all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuke, reproof um, and that scripture thoroughly equips the man of God for good works. So I, it's I believe, all God. I know you know yeah, that. I'm just saying. saying it for anyone who might be listening like right. over there. No. <laughs> so, but anyway, but keep thing, debating but, 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 like wait, God's point, words point, by all means. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to, because me and Garfield spoke on air, I didn't get to give, give, get to give a reference for, uh -huh. for one of my scholars. And I, I admit that when it comes to scholarship, we can all appeal to authority. Obviously, yeah, there's Garfield's doing that. Fallacies of but I, I'm going to do that, and maybe Garfield can speak about, say, say this, and we can see where the conversation goes. Sure. Just quickly, yeah. So this is on the Shasu of Yahweh, and this is this is by um, uh, Kenneth Kitchen. This was published in the Tyndale House Bulletin, in 1956 by the School of Archaeology. Now, my premise is that the Shasu of Yahweh, Shasu being nomads of Yahweh, were the Israelites. And Seems I went legit. Right, and I went into the Brooklyn Papyrus, and I've got something for that here, but we do this, and I want to include you in the conversation so it's a round table conversation. Sure thing yeah? is so kind of last minute dog com, but let's go for it. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> we'll, we'll improvisation on a theme. I'm going back through the so Old Testament again. What it says, the verso of the papyrus, this is by Kenneth Kitchen, is equally intriguing, for it lists 79 servants in a large dynasty, dynasty 13 of the Egyptian household, 1745 BC of whom 45 were mainly Semitic Asiatics. A few, especially the children, bear purely Egyptian names, but most bear Semitic names. Nearly 40 of these people actually bear a usually Semitic name, followed by the epithet, who is called, and a second, and an Egyptian name. This provides a powerful contemporary parallel for the construction of Joseph's Egyptian name, yeah. Zephaniah Pania, to be the subject of a forthcoming study. Now, one or two names in the Brooklyn list are of special interest. One is identical uh, with the later Hebrew name Menahem. Uh, the other is actually a Shipra, later the name of a midwife in Exodus chapter 1, verse 15, who thus bore in her name, uh, in her time, a name already venerable. A third is etymologically comparable with that of Job. So once again, that was published in the Tyndale House Bulletin Winter, 1956, by School of Archaeology. Kenneth Kitchen. Now, my contention is not that everybody that was in ancient Egypt at that time uh, was necessarily in a, a slave under bondage. No, of course not. They you know, know there would have been the people that were in. Yeah. There would have been people that were involved in dif um, in different in different roles. But um, so so I was just going to say with Kenneth Kitchen, he's a British biblical scholar, ancient Near Eastern historian. Personal work and, and Bruna Professor Emer Emeritus of Egyptology, honorary research fellow at the School of Archaeology, and uh, he's not he's a lightweight, is what you're no, saying. No, he's, be, he's been described by the Times as the very architect of Egyptian chronology. So, Garfield, wow. if you want to maybe let me ask you a question before um, I respond. Yeah, okay. What time period were the Shasu, um, those people that you talked about in the Brooklyn Papyrus? What time period was that? 
This is an uh, the, oh, so this is from the 13th century BC. 13th century. So now yeah. BC. We got to be careful. Sorry, not BC. 13th dynasty. 13th century. 13th BC. dynasty. Huh? 13th dynasty. Oh, Egyptian dynasty. 13th Egyptian uh, dynasty, sorry, I beg your pardon. You not, not search engine when that 13th is. 13th yeah. dynasty, no. Brooklyn Papyrus isn't that from the 13th dynasty. Okay, let's, let, me, let me read what it says yeah, from yeah. Wikipedia and then, yeah, and then go yeah. ahead. Mm -hmm. The papyrus is inscribed on both sides and was used over a longer period. The document dates to 1809 to 1743 BCE. Okay, the so content, 18th century Yeah, the, the content appears to date from the reign of uh, Anamat III into the 13th dynasty. Copies of a letter and royal decree to Vizier Anku are also included. So it's prior to the 13th dynasty. So that's uh, the Brooklyn Papyrus? That is... That's not the Brooklyn Papyrus. Brooklyn Papyrus, yeah. The Brooklyn Papyrus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The date typically set for the Exodus. That's for the okay, Exodus. 1446. Well, look, that's, that's that. Okay, all right. Now, yeah. hold on a second. Mm. If the Brooklyn Papyrus is talking about, who, who is it talking about? The Brooklyn Papyrus is talking about. Because I'm not going to debate you. I'm just no, no, going no, to let I'm just, you answer all your questions. Sure. Watch what I'm going to do. It's talking about 95 servants. All right. what, about, what, about the 90, what about the 95 servants? What's special about it? The, the, the nomenclature is showing evidence that the uh, Israelite uh, slaves or, or people in bondage were being mixed or at least taking on the family names of Egyptian uh, like origin so then but they retain some Israelite uh, names okay. is what I heard. Right, the first thing we got to stop saying is Israelite names. Mm -hmm. they are Hebrew Sem names. They are Semitic names. Mm -hmm. Semit he did mm -hmm. say that. I right? mm -hmm. Canaanite names. Mm -hmm. Could be any human being. Mm -hmm. We saying that they're Israelite are we imposing our mindset on them. But watch this though. Yeah, if it's in the 1800s mm -hmm. are you saying those were Israelites? That's what can no, 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 listen yeah. to the logic though, yeah. if they are Israelites, mm -hmm. how do you prove that? Well, Kenneth Kitchen's contention mm -hmm. is by the names, that's, that's what Kenneth Kitchen is saying, that okay. they are Israelites, so there is, there is hold no on, way on, to on, prove on, either on. way, okay. that's so what now, I'm saying. In that, the 1800, mm -hmm. watch this, Yeah. so when, if they were supposed to be in is, um, Egypt for how long? 400, 400 years. Alright, so they were 400 years. Are there anyone else with Semitic names that came into Egypt? Of course there would be. The okay. H the Hicks so why do so why do you pick those people when since the second dynasty of Egypt mm -hmm. people with Semitic names have been coming in there? Mm -hmm. So what makes those particular ninety-five people in the Brooklyn Papyrus special? Why? Well, what the contention seems to be, mm -hmm. yeah, for, for the consensus against the Exodus is that virtually no Israelites were there. Which which the contention that Kitchen is laying out is that essentially these names are Israelite names. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. all right. So earlier, yeah. our good friend here mm -hmm. says that the Shasu, you, you guys agree that the Shasu were the Israelites. Didn't you, didn't you no, say that? No, I didn't Shasu, say that I one, Shasu, but I don't even know nomads. what Shasu is. Nomads. But I'm saying the Shasu but the, Yahweh. But the Israelites because, were also nomadic right. because of the wilderness. All right, so right. The, Shasu, like in that respect. the Shasu, right? When they were kicked out of Egypt, at what time were they taken out of Egypt? Because you know the Shasu actually worked in Canaan for the Egyptians and they worked also in Egypt for the Egyptians. Yeah, but because, what, hold yeah, on, hold on. Yeah. Because at the time, mm. look at your logics right now. Yeah. In the 1800s, right? Mm. And we're going to be sensible now. 400 years would make it 1400 BC, around that time period, right? Yeah. At 1400 BC, who controlled Canaan at that time? No, yeah, it would be 13, sorry, it's 17 uh, 13. something, 18th century to 14th is 13, 13 all right. something. Who controlled Canaan at that time? According to the Egyptians, they did. All right, according to history, who did? That's what I said, according to the Egyptians. No, 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 no. I'm not worried about the Egyptians. Yeah. Let's look at what the Hittites wrote or what the Assyrians wrote. Mm -hmm. And you will see in that tri the three of them cor corresponding, you will see that the Exodus, as far as logically speaking, could not happen at that time. Yeah. That's like me leaving out, of, leaving out of London and going to a whole other city across and saying that, oh, I escaped the UK government when we're still in the UK. It yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. Still, let me finish, let me finish. I made right. you speak. Yeah, yeah. If it's 1800s, mm -hmm. or as the, as the lady said, the 17, really the 1700s to the 1300s, we got to look logically what's going on in the region. Mm -hmm. You have the Hittites who control up Karshemish way, right? Egypt controls Canaan. We have the, the Armada letters showing in the 1300s. Can I just That's ask, the, where is your information it's mainly? Actually, it's no, actually, no, I understand you've done it for research for this, but and where did you how Get do you from? verify yeah oh because well, the egyptian basically, word basically, is generally taken because it's, it's no you know. no this is what we do we look at um william dever william dever is a bible believer right 
Richard Hess is a Bible believer. 95% of the people that I use in my book are Bible believers. I should say 99 actually. So 99%. get back to Jesus and come so now, back to me. No. All right. <laughs> that's what's up. I'm a that's Bible what's, believer. That's what's up. So now watch this. So now I use Bible believers to make a point because they don't have any skin. A second. I'm just yeah. gonna they don't have any skin in the game. So yeah. when you say the, the Shah's who possibly are Israelites because mm. they're nomads. Yeah. The Shah's who have been coming out of Egypt in the in the fifteenth century, the thirteenth century. But not the Shah's of Yahweh. The, the Shah's of Yahweh, yes. So but the is but of the Yahweh earliest was in, there in the fourteen hundreds with the thirteen century. Thirteen seventy five is the earliest inscription, right? No, in Solab bin no, Sudan. No, is there an earlier no, inscription yeah, than that? Earlier inscription. Hold on, what from right Tutmos the third? Hold on, I'm gonna show you an earlier inscription. Because that's the only other one I've seen. Hold on, hold on. But regardless, regardless of when at the time, let's, look, let's deal yeah. with the, the 95 names of the Brooklyn Papyrus. Can we agree they were Semitic names? Yeah, they are Semitic names. All right, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me ask one question back. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One question, one question, one question. Let me finish this Let me just ask this question. Mm. So what I'm trying to say is simply this. Can a Semitic name also be an Israelite name? Or can, can we, let me just finish. Or can we have a name that is an Israelite name oh. that, that is, is more... <laughs> so 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 can we have a name that we could say that is almost distinct distinctively Israelite because that's what ah, Kitchen is contending for. There you go. So now Out of this amazing, when he found when he found the name Upper L, we find somebody who worshiped the god El. Do you have anyone in Egypt worshiping Yahweh? The only people we have is the Shasu from Edom. Those are not Israelites. But that's the funny thing because Right, right. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look at, but look at this though. Yeah. The Israelites, according to Deuteronomy 32:8, was given the name Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That was their God, given mm -hmm. by El. Yeah. It's El Elyon, the Most High. Right. That's, that's right. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. In the Exodus, yeah. his name was not known. All right. Mm. But listen to me carefully. Yeah. El Elyon gave them the name Yahweh for their particular group, the Israelites within Canaan. Yeah. El is the main deity of the Canaanites. The name El don't necessarily mean it's an Israelite, but but Israel is a El is a theophoric element within within the name Israel. So we yeah, know yeah, their yeah, God yeah. was El yeah. before they started worshiping Yahweh. Right, right. So no, now, no, Yahweh is Elohim. Yahweh is Elohim. There is no distinction. <laughs> no, well, that, well, 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 well. So okay, no, okay. Check. So Canaan, Canaanites <laughs> worship El. We know that the main God in in in, um, in the Canaanite region was El. Their name was Israel. That's what their name was. It had the theophore element. It's not Israel. Would you agree to that? Yeah, yeah, I agree to that. All right. So now, watch this now. The Shasu, are you saying the Shasu possibly were the Israelites? So what I'm saying is the Bible contends mm -hmm. and says from the Egyptian Pharaoh mm -hmm. that um, the Egyptian Pharaoh says, I don't know the name of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's what he says about that region okay. at that particular time. So thereafter, mm -hmm. from under Amenhotep III, we then have the Shasu of Yahweh as the inscription. Right. And those particular individuals, the Shasu of Yahweh, um, on the actual depicted as, as enemies basically of Egypt. So that's Yeah, they were troublemakers. Yeah, well, so some of them well, were some of them were workers and some of them were troublemakers, so we held them as prisoners of war. That's normal. Right. What I'm gonna say to you mm. is at the time period when the Shasu exited Egypt, you got to ask yourself who controls Canaan at the time. I, Canaan is controlled by Egypt. I've got, now, hold on, yeah, hold on yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. Kenneth Kitchen, yeah. 1950s, 1960s, mm. superstar, mm. 70s, yeah. superstar, yeah. 80s, superstar. Yeah. After the 80s, mm. that work by Kitchen has been swept under the table by mm. new information. Mm. And what Mazar, Mazar is the leading believer mm -hmm. who is the archaeologist. So mm -hmm. if you're a Christian or a Hebrew, the, 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 the guy, Bible, the, the guy, all right, he God uses the Bible. The he uses the Bible as the main thing to go by, mm. yes. right? Mm. He's a believer. Yeah. William Dever is a believer. Yeah. These guys are saying the proto-Israelites come from Canaan, yeah. that they left from the lower Canaanite hills mm. and went up to the Canaanite hills higher and started 250 land areas that they lived in. Mm. Now, how do we know this? They are called the Proto-Israelites. Those people carried the same culture as Canaan. Mm. When we look at the, 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 um, the pottery, it's carrying, what, what does it say? It carries the name of El and it carries the, the culture. Mm. The Hebrew language is a word, the, 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 the Hebrew language, I mean not the language, the writing mm. comes out of the Canaanite writing. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, on, no. All right, which comes from the Egyptian hieroglyphics, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right, so now we know that they're using, they're writing in the Canaanite dialect. They're writing, they're, they're writing the word L. They're using the same agriculture. They're building houses like the Canaanites. They're, they're not eating pork like the Canaanites. Mm. They're not doing, then everything they're doing is referring to them as a Canaanite. So the Bible story might tell us about the Exodus, but on the other hand, it's also giving us evidence within the text that they are Canaanites. For example, in, mm. the, in the chapter that I did on no Exodus, no religion, yep. I show and prove that Ephraim mm. remained in the land. Mm. When you look at 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles actually doesn't even refer to an Exodus like, yeah. like how the Exodus refers to yeah. it. So in academia, academia says Exodus was written after the Babylonian exile. Right. Most Christians and Hebrews believe that Moses may have written the five first five books mm. or it was written older mm -hmm. but in the book of Chronicles it tells us that there's no Exodus how does it tell us that mm. it shows us Ephraim living in the land continuously having children in the land continuously the same with Judah Judah came in Genesis 38 came down had children those children were killed by God one of them didn't want to have sex with his, his, his um his brother's wife God killed him the third one is in first Chronicles 421 where he has children and they have children mm. and they begin to live in the land and and, and start doing the um what you call the, the what is it wine or or cinnamon whatever they were trading they control it so it shows a continuation from judah all the way to david without an exodus without a conquest so the bible actually which is the word of god is telling us that the exodus didn't happen within the biblical text okay so my response to that would be would, would, would be this <laughs> the, 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 the ephraim you don't get to ephraim's name of finding out the the origin of ephraim's name without 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 um without without going through exodus the exodus account anyway so you can't just arrive at an ephraim from absolutely nowhere as far as the biblical account is concerned so all chronicles for me is doing is given a start point or a reference point for, for, for Ephraim or the tribe of Ephraim, but not necessarily um, where he's come from or his lineage from Joseph. So that would it be does. it. It does. What are you talking about? So so where is so who is supposed to hold be on, Ephraim's on, Ephraim's on, father hold on, hold on from on Chronicles? On so, Ephraim. Huh? I'm coming back. Okay. Just yeah. 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 Let me let me say this for the record. Yeah. This is not to tell anybody what to believe or how to believe. Yeah, yeah. But the Bible proves there's no Exodus within its text. Okay, if the well, Bible, God, can, God yeah. cannot create a book. Mm. This is what this is what's mind blowing about my book. Mm. What I prove is that the Book of Chronicles contradicts Exodus and tells us there's no Exodus. Sorry. Watch this. You, Watch sorry, this. Sorry, sorry. When you say your book, you wrote the book. I wrote you the book. did. You wrote the book. Yeah. yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> now watch this, watch yeah, this family. Got, yeah, yeah, cuz. Yeah, the Chronicles, right. The, tri the tribe of Ephraim, no Exodus. Mm -hmm. Now look at Ephraim. Ephraim goes down. What's up, my brother? Okay. Yeah, man, you're on the, ca you're on the camera. All right, yeah. cool. Unless you want to see it on the camera, it's all good. <laughs> mm. All right, the tribe of Ephraim, mm -hmm. what happened is his two sons, Ezer and Eliad, went down into Egypt down into um the, the, the um where the Gath, the tribe of Gath lives and basically they got killed for trying to steal cows right when they try to steal the cows now and by the way how could they go down to where Gath is if they're in Egypt they were born in Egypt to Joseph how can they be going down when you can't go down down to Egypt you have to go up if you got to go up that means they were already in the land of Canaan already going down to Gath because Gath is where near where the Philistines area was. Mm. So they're going down to down to Gath. They try to steal some cows, right? This is what the Bible says yeah. in Chronicles. Mm -hmm. They try to steal the cows, the two they they get killed. This is Ephraim's sons, right? This is what the Bible says, 1 mm. Chronicles 7, mm -hmm. right? Now watch this now. Once they get killed, guess what? Ephraim come down and mourns their death. Where is Ephraim coming from if he comes down to mourn? He couldn't have been in Egypt if he was born in Egypt. That don't make no sense. So somebody's trying to fool us within the biblical text and it can't be in the same book that God inspired. So how is God inspiring man to write a book that contradicts the whole thing about the Exodus? Yeah. And the Bible is based on the Exodus. That okay. don't make no sense. Okay. Oh, hold on, let me finish. Okay, let me finish. Mm -hmm. So Ephraim, what happened to Ephraim now? He comes down and mourns with his brothers about what happened. Then he has another child. Guess what happened when he has another child in Canaan? That child has another has a daughter that builds three cities in Canaan. So his lineage is continuing in Canaan. They're not in Egypt. They're supposed to be in Egypt at this time. You can't be two places at the same time. You can't be. So for, for people to, to read this and say, oh, the Exodus happened. But how is the Chronicles saying this if Ephraim is born in Egypt? And guess what happened? This is what kills it. Ephraim now goes in according to the Exodus tradition into Egypt with the 75 and has grandchildren. 
How does he have grandchildren when he's like five years old? Yeah. This don't add up. We, we, where's that? What? what? So with, with Ephraim now, right? Mm -hmm. Are you saying when the 12 tribes essentially... How long is it? 36 uh, minutes. That's too long. Come on. Let yeah. get the last in. All right. Ahead, so what I'm, last, what I'm saying last is... Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just to wrap up now anyway. Good conversation with my brother Garfield. Mm -hmm. He's over from the US. First time to the UK and obviously promoting his book. And we're having the dialogue, which we need to have about the Hebrew Israelites and about the Bible in general and scholarship, archaeological attestation, everything, yeah? So my point, my final point would, would, would be this. As far as I'm aware, and I will have to do some more study, mm -hmm. which is, which is uh, fine. Um, when the 12 tribes leave, yeah? And they leave as a mixed multitude. Mm -hmm. Ephraim as a tribe goes with the Israelites. Is that not, not what the biblical account is saying? It says that, but it also gives another account of the same individual. There's from, something from wrong in, in Chronicles. As a man to a man, there's something wrong with that. Okay, I'll have to read up on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'll all I'm going to tell up you. Read it. up on it. Yeah, yeah, you know what happened? Yeah. People don't read the entire Bible. We only read that agrees with our theology. And that's what's wrong with, with the Bible studies in the first place. But I got you. Get the book. It's on Amazon. Number one in genealogy. Garfield is number one in Amazon. Black man. Remember that. Peace yeah. and love. Bless up to my brother Garfield, yeah? Hey, all right, on. yeah.